Construct a recurrence relation for the cobweb model. with demand sets <clears throat> and supply sets as follows. D is equal to set of all Q comma P such that Q plus P is 24 and S is equal to supply set huh? at all Q P such that 2Q plus 18 is equal to P okay solution So we will first write down, we will first find what is the equilibrium point, okay? We find, let me call this step one, okay? We find equilibrium point. And it is Q plus P equal to 24 and 2q minus p is minus 18 so i will solve the two equations and i will get 3q is equal to 6 right so q is 2 and therefore p has to be from this equation p has to be 22 so the equilibrium point q star p star is equal to 2 comma 22 okay second step i'll find the supply function find supply function to find the supply function we write supply set first what is supply set we write supply set the supply set is uh, 2q plus 18 is equal to p correct <clears throat> and we will find q from this Let's find q from this So this means that 2q is p minus 18 and for q is half p minus 9. Okay, this q is giving me the supply function if which I denote by qsp is equal to half p minus 9 this is the supply function <clears throat> third step we will find the 
inverse demand function you will find the inverse demand function to find the demand inverse demand function we will write demand set what is the demand set we write the demand set what is that it is uh, q plus p is equal to 24 if you want to find the inverse demand function you find p from this find p from this So this means p is equal to 24 minus q so the inverse demand function is p which is a function of q so i'm going to call it p dq because it's from demand that d comes it's function of q so it is 24 minus q so this is the it's called the inverse demand function <clears throat> Correct. Now by the cobweb model, we if you look at the cobweb model yesterday's lecture, okay, what we have obtained are the following things we have obtained. If you look at the value given P naught from the cobweb model, given P naught, we get Q1. Okay, and how we got Q1? The, by equation, by the relation, let me say, what was that relation? How we did it? We get Q1 from that. We got that Q1 was supply function applied on P0. So once you give me P0, I will substitute in the supply function and I will get Q1. Okay. Use this P1 or use this Q1 and put it in the inverse demand function and use inverse demand function <clears throat> to find p1 what was that relation so p1 was nothing but inverse demand function applied on q1 so what have we done we first took p0 substituted in the supply function got q1 then we took this q1 substituted in the inverse demand function and we got p1 okay and we will continue this and we continue this process which is called as a cobweb model, correct? <clears throat> so when I observe the first relation, that relation I'm going to call relation A. And this I'm going to call relation B. Okay, when I observe the first relation, What I see here is Q1 is QS times P0. So in general, you can say that QT is QS of P T minus 1. Okay, by equation A. And right, Q1 is equal to 
QS times P0. So this is Q1, this is Q0, this is P0, sorry. So one less. And what do you observe from B? If you try to generalize by B in general, by B, I observe that PT is equal to inverse demand function applied on QT. Correct? This is what you get from the Cobb model. <clears throat> Hence, QT is equal to and PT is equal to what is QT? QT is QS times PT minus 1. What is QS now? What is QS? Let's go up and see. What is QS? What is the supply function? What is the supply function? Supply function is half P minus Q. Half P minus 9. Sorry, this is 9. Huh? Supply function is half, supply function of P is half P minus 9. So, what is supply function of PT minus 1? We know that supply function of P is half P minus 9. So, supply function at PT minus 1 will be half PT minus 1. Minus 9. <clears throat> what about this demand inverse demand function at QT? What is demand function? What is PD? If you go above and see, we have calculated inverse demand function also. Inverse demand function is 24 minus Q. So inverse demand function add of Q is 24 minus Q. So this Q and this Q is same. So what is the inverse demand function of QT? Inverse demand function of Q is 24 minus Q. So what is the inverse demand function of QT? It will be 24 minus QT. So that I will write here 24 minus QT. <coughs> So for a given cobweb model, remember that these two things will always be used, these two things. So any cobweb model problem, whenever you get a problem related to cobweb model, you will first find the supply function, then you will find the inverse demand function, which we have called A and B above, okay, and not A and B, sorry which we have obtained above and then we will write these relations because these relations are obtained by what from the cobweb model and then we will write down our problem what is qs what is pd and we will substitute here okay now i will look at these two equations now this t is actually you know t is t is a number which i will i will just t is actually representing a natural number okay so what i will do is I will uh, just, we have a habit of writing natural number by n. We'll just replace that natural number t by n. Okay, so it will look simple for us. So it actually looks like this. Qn is equal to, it's now it's looking like a sequence. Qn is equal to 0.5 pn minus 1 minus 9. And pn is equal to, 24 minus qn this is i am calling say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2 if you look at equation 1 and 2 carefully you can substitute 1 in equation 2 substitute equation 1 in equation 2 Correct, because equation 2 is 
Pn is equal to 24 minus Qn. And here I can substitute equation 1. So this is equation 2. So we'll get 24 minus Qn. What is Qn? It's 0.5 Pn minus 1 minus 9. <clears throat> and therefore Pn is equal to minus 0 0.5 Pn minus 1 plus 33. So this is the required recurrence relation for the given cobweb model. Solve the recurrence relation. Pn is equal to minus 0 0.5 Pn minus 1 plus 33 with initial condition with initial condition P0 is equal to 23. <clears throat> so this is the same recurrence relation, okay, that I've taken above. I'm solving that recurrence relation, but I'm just giving you the initial condition now. The initial condition is P0 is equal to 23. Now, if you all know how do you solve the recurrence relation, you will say that let first you consider the homogeneous part. Okay, so consider so this is non homogeneous, right? So 33 is non homogeneous. So consider homogeneous part. Then you will get the homogeneous solution. What is the homogeneous part? This Pn is equal to minus 0 0.5 Pn minus 1 and put Pn equal to alpha raised to n. I hope you have already learned about recurrence relation. So put Pn equal to alpha raised to n in the above equation. So we'll get Pn is alpha raised to n is equal to minus 0 0.5 alpha raised to n minus 1. And therefore, alpha raised to n minus 1 cancels. And you get the value of alpha is minus 0 0.5. And therefore, the homogeneous solution PnH, the homogeneous solution, is C alpha is twin. Okay, this is the solution of a homogeneous recurrence relation, which is so PNH is C into minus 0 0.5 raised to n. This is how we solve this homogeneous recurrence relation. Now we want to find particular part <clears throat> what 
what is the non homogeneous equation the non homogeneous equation is pn is equal to minus 0 0.5 pn minus 1 plus 33 Correct. This 33 can be written as what? 33 into 1 raised to n. The value of s is equal to 1. And s is equal to 1 is not the root of auxiliary equation because what is the root of auxiliary equation the root of auxiliary equation is alpha so alpha is called what root of auxiliary equation so there are two cases to find a particular solution if s is a root of auxiliary equation and if s is not the root of auxiliary equation so if s is not the root of auxiliary equation then the particular solution is given by p not s raised to n given by p not s raised to n. you can find this in the method of solving recurrence relation just revise those methods so if s is not the root of the toxic equation then the solution particle solution will become p naught s raised to n but s is 1 so this is p naught only p naught into 1 raised to n which is p naught <clears throat> so a and p is just p naught and substitute this a and p in the original recurrence relation substitute ENP in the original recurrence relation so we get ANP is equal to ANP in PN PN the original sequence is PN huh? P is equal to minus 0 0.5 Pn P minus Pn P plus 33. So this is P naught because Pn P is P naught. minus 0 0.5 to pn minus 1 p is also p naught because it's constant plus 33 and therefore when i collect 1.5 p naught will become 33 and therefore p naught will become 33 upon 1.5 just 22 because it is 3 upon 2 and 3 and 3 can 3 and 33 cancel then you will get 11 into 2 is 22 now for the particular solution a and p p and p sorry this p naught becomes 22 and therefore the general solution It is Pn, it's Pn H minus Pn P, particular solution plus homogeneous solution. What was the particular, what was the homogeneous solution? The homogeneous solution was C into 0 0.5, right? C into 0 0.5. 
particular solution was what? Minus 0.5 is standard. SPNH, sorry, minus 0 0.5 is plus PNP is 22. And now you put n equal to 0. So you'll get the value of constant. Put n equal to 0. So you'll get P naught is equal to C into minus 0 0.5 raised to 0 plus 22. And P naught is 23, correct? How much was P naught given to you? P naught was 23. So 23 is equal to C plus 22. And therefore, <coughs> C is 20 is 1. Therefore, the general solution is Pn equal to C into minus 0 0.5 raised to n plus 22 becomes P n equal to minus 0 0.5 raised to n plus 22 is the solution of recurrence relation. 